had that movement. They uh, described to us how they seem to be drawn into an enclosure of some sort. They often call it a tunnel. And they go through this tunnel quite rapidly and they come out on the other side into an incredibly brilliant and warm and loving light. Don't know exactly how I entered the tunnel, or just at what point, but it was when the guides had asked me, and I said yes, and I feel myself going in an upward motion. The tunnel is not too big, um, just seem for one person to go one at a time. It doesn't touch you. Oh, I didn't reach out and touch the walls, but it's black, and I feel myself going up and looking at light, bright light at the end of the tunnel. And the next, as I'm going along, I see the gray area, but I did not stop to go in and see just what was going on. I went on to come out into this beautiful pasture, valley land, flowers, bright, beautiful light, brilliant color, nothing here is like it at all. The next thing I remember is I heard a set of chimes, and as I looked at an angle, probably 40, 35 or 40 degrees, I could see a tunnel. The tunnel was like a spiral, like it was moving whether I was moving or not. Then I began to whisk down it, and I could hear these chimes, but I was in other peace and other tranquility. And it was such a stark, dramatic difference between the way that body was and what was happening to that body and this place I was, this utter peace. As I moved closer to the light, I was kept being surrounded and filled with this love, this love of like, I can't describe it except when you haven't seen your parents in a long time. If you've been away from your family and when you first see your mom and your dad, that feeling when you're a small kid, that feeling that you get, I knew I was safe, I knew everything was peaceful, and I knew it was right. As I came into the tunnel, came through the tunnel, I came into a place much like walking out of a dark room into a bright room, as if my eyes were trying to adjust to this brilliant light. The contrast between the brilliant light of the lightning bolt and the brilliant light that was in the tunnel was another thing that was quite dramatic because this light was so brilliant and so bright, it passed through me, it permeated me. It, 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 it and I became one. For years now, we've been using the expression of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And I wonder whether it was started, perhaps, by people who had near-death experiences many years ago. In fact, I've been shown some paintings of just this scene that were done several hundred years ago. In the 15th century, the Dutch painter Hieronymus Bosch even painted this theme in his painting, Ascent of the Blessed. In the foreground and the bottom of the painting, we see people who are dying, and as they are dying, they're surrounded by spiritual beings who attempt to turn their attention upwards. Above them, there's a tunnel which goes off into the distance, and at the end of the tunnel is a very bright light. As these people go through the tunnel, they kneel reverently into the light. So we know then that these experiences have existed among human beings from time immemorial. In this light, they often tell us that they see relatives or friends of theirs who have already died, who seem to be there to meet them and to greet them and to help them through this transition. Particularly very great thing happened with me. It was that I saw my parents, my real parents, and. I understood that they were killed. And they were killed by KGB in Moscow, and I was happy of this. It's, it sounds very ridiculous, but you know, it, I was happy because I was thought that I was a, a, a abandoned by them. And I'd lost a girlfriend in the polio epidemic in the 30s. I think it was 38, but I'm not positive of that date. And she assured me that everything was fine and she was happy. And I also saw my grandparents coming to meet me. I had never known my grandfathers. They had both passed away before I was born. But I did know my grandmothers and my mother also. And as I'm there, this baby appears to me. And he says, hi, I'm your brother. And I said, I don't have a brother. And we don't talk as I'm talking to you. There was no way of misunderstanding. It was more like it was 
mental telepathy. And he shows himself to me as a small infant dressed in a cap and a little long dress with a knitted sack over it, booties and socks, and tells me, look me over now and remember how I look this way. And you can tell our father when you get back and he'll tell you it's happened. And when I was able to talk to him, my dad said, well, I don't know how you knew that because nobody but your mother, the doctor, and I knew about these things. So it gives me hope to know that whatever happens, we'll be seeing each other again one day as we're greeted by those loved ones, family, and friends who have already died. All these greeters seem to be encouraging us to come into the presence of that light and are letting us know that everything is going to be okay. The being of light that these patients often describe encountering is plainly a personal being. They say that they are in the presence of a being of complete love who accepts them and loves them totally and who has a wonderful personality, is very knowledgeable about them, very wise, very helpful, also uh, has a wonderful sense of humor. This is the most wonderful part of it. This is a warm, loving light. It's the most masculine, but it also has overtones of mother love, sisterly love. This just pulsates around. He has totally accepted me and forgiven me for everything I've ever done, but can I forgive myself for some of these selfish things I have done? She took on all the pain and all the suffering with total understanding of what had brought me to that point. And it was like we were intertwined and that everything that I felt, she felt too. Um, and there was this unconditional love, like most parents have for, for their children, um, that no matter how bad I might have been or um, that I was totally loved and totally understood because she understood the motivation behind what I did. Um, there was this, this togetherness, uh, this empathy um, that she had for me, and just wonderful love. And sitting there, wondering what to do next, when suddenly that room became flooded with light, and then three things happened simultaneously just like that. Something deep inside of the spiritual being, sitting on the side of the bed looking at the corpse lying in the bed, was told to stand up here in the presence of the Son of God. Out of that light stepped the most amazing being I have ever been in the presence of, the most powerfully built male I have ever seen. To my right, I saw a being coming toward me. In those days, I had never heard of the death experience or ever had it described to me, so I had no idea how to relate to it. Since then, I've heard people describe it as God or Jesus or Moses or lots of different names, a great angel. I, I believe that this being of light was my higher self, the greater part of me looking at the part of me that just experienced this life. As this being, because this being, I was so comfortable with this being and so assured that only I, if someone knew themselves and knew the love of God in them, then they could have that same relationship with themselves. And it was as if this being had come to be with me. And now what's being in the presence of a being who knows everything about you? To know that he totally accepts you and totally loves you, I never wanted to leave this being again under any circumstance. 